we're driving. Hey, hey. So we are, I don't know if I should wear my sunglasses or not. I feel like I could be a cool kid. Like, she's got sunglasses. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you guys a story. I've actually been thinking about it. And we've got, we're on our way. Where are we on our way to? Christmas tree shop? No, we're going to Honda. Oh, we're going to Honda. Because Miss Kathy likes to talk on the phone while she drives. And uh, so we got to get it fixed because her Bluetooth in her car is not working. <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I had this thing happen to me on Thursday where um, I just thought it was really kind of cool and I wanted to share it. And I'm curious because I haven't told this story to my mom yet, so I'm curious to see what she'll say. This is my mom. If you don't, if you haven't met her, she's driving though, so we're gonna keep it safe. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And so I was um, actually biking to work Thursday, okay. and I, you know, I'm five minutes into my bike ride, and I look down, and I find a dime on the ground. And so I stop, I get off my bike, and I get this dime. If you know anything about me, I'm on this money mindset journey where every time I see a penny, every time I see a dime, every time I see whatever on the ground, I pick it up and I express extreme gratitude. So I do this thing where I, you know, I pick up the penny or dime or whatever and I, I hold it and I'm like, I'm a money magnet and I do a little dance and I get really excited about it. And so I did that and then, you know, I was, I've been doing that. I've been like actually tracking how much money has been coming my way, like whether it's organically, like I find it on the ground, which by the way, it happens every single day. It's ridiculous how much we tend to overlook. Do you thank God? Because he'll give you more. <laughs> yep. We do the, we do the gratitude. We get, we find the money and we're like, yes, thank you. It's awesome. So excited. And then I got back on my bike on Thursday and I continued on my way to work and I saw another dime. And I was like, oh my gosh, another dime. And then I looked at it closer, it was stuck in the asphalt. Oh my goodness. And I was like, dang, that dime's stuck in the asphalt. But the more I thought about it, the more I think that a lot of us in our lives, we're going after things, we keep you know, pounding on the same door that doesn't serve us, that's not going to bring anything to fruition for us. So how many of us in our lives are looking at the dime stuck in the asphalt saying, why can't I pick up this dime? Like getting our nails all dirty, breaking nails, trying to get this money, trying to get these things that we want that just, it's not our time. And if we would have looked closer, we would have kept going on, you know, on our bike ride to wherever we were going, we would have found a dime that was meant for us. What do you think? Well, yeah. Can you believe a couple months ago, I was on a journey trying to find all the change I could find in old pocketbooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so like mother, like daughter? It must be. What happened? Well, I think I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> she gave, okay, so she was, she was <laughs> digging at the one that was stuck in the asphalt then. <laughs> and I just think that, how many other things, like is there, I don't know, maybe like a relationship that we're breaking our fingernails trying to dig that dime out of the asphalt. Is there money that we, like I know as a business owner, there are potential clients that I just like, sometimes I cannot let go of. I see their potential, I see their future. And I'm like, I, I need you to change your life because you have so much potential, but they're the dime stuck in the asphalt. They're not ready to change. Now, you know, a hot summer day might come and loosen them out of the asphalt and they'll be able to move on and transform their life. But it's a matter of whether we know that we can, it's time to move on and go after something else. Definitely, you're correct. I'm almost 57 and I'm still, I'm still not sure of myself. <laughs> but I know I'm okay. Yeah. But maybe I need to be better than okay. So yeah, you're right. I'm thinking on it. You're thinking on it. Thinking on it. She's thinking on it. Maybe we can move on it. Yeah, my problem is I feel like I have to help people and I stay stuck because I stay down at their level instead of moving away. Mm, so, yeah, so picking up the, the dime in the asshole. Oh, I know. And, you know, the thing I always tell a lot of my clients is that we have to know when to push forward and focus on things other than other people. A lot of times what we do is we get caught up in um, you know, the drama of other people. We get caught up in, you know, I don't have this money, this dime that's stuck in the asphalt. It has to be mine. It has to be mine. I need it. I need it. I need this. I need to be able to help people 
so that I can feel better about myself. I need to be able to, you know, what do you think? Well, what are you thinking? She's thinking. Well, I know that that's true, and we're put on this earth to help others, and our money isn't really to help us, it's to help other people. Mm -hmm. And so if we say stay stuck and trying to get everything for ourselves, we'll never get everything because we're not giving it to others. And so it's funny, one of the things that you know my business coach tells me is that it's okay, it's, but it's also totally okay to want those things for yourself because if your glass is empty, so that, that metaphor, I use it all the time, if your glass is empty, you'll never be able to pour any liquid into anyone else's glass. You're right. So if you're going after these things and you, it, it's important that you fulfill yourself and you fulfill your soul and you know that you're, you're fulfilling your own emotional needs so that you don't have to use helping other people to, as a kind of drug or use money as a drug. You have, you have already enough within you so that you can give back. Right. And like right now, I had the morning plan before the birthday party for my grand twins. Daphne Barbie. and Keegan. And Their what am fourth I doing? birthday. And what am I doing? I'm running a side trip because I can't talk on my telephone. Because <laughs> we got to get her Bluetooth and her car fixed because she is a chatty Cathy, literally. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have heard of those dolls. They're like from what the era of those. I'm thinking somewhere in the 1960s, but I'm not sure. Where, yeah, they would, like, you, like, pull the string in the back. Not like the creepy ones you see in, like, the horror movies, but, like, you would pull the string on the back, and what would she say? She would say stuff. But, you know, I can't remember. I got you a reproduction. Do you remember I know. What it said? I'm trying to remember. Does your father still have that? I love you. Like, <laughs> I don't know, but it, I think, I think Dad has had it at some point. You know what I'd like to have, now that we're talking on retro toys, I guess that's what you call them. I want a talking Mr. Ed puppet. I had What's one. What's a Mr. Ed puppet? You put it on your hand. It was Mr. Ed. It was a TV series back in, I don't know, the 60s or 70s. I don't know. Do you guys know what she's talking about? And you pulled the string and it was the talk. It was Mr. Ed the talking horse. The uh, <laughs> horse? <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be like Mr. Rogers. You no, know? it was the talking horse. And, and I thought, you know, you never see any of those anymore. <laughs> That's funny. I do have my monkey from when I was in fifth grade, so that would have been 1965. 1965. Any last thoughts on the journey to, to being financially successful? Well, if we're helping other people and we're using our money for others besides, you know, once we pay our bills and all, all I can say is I know that God will help us. I need so to work. the universe has your back. Yes. Right? God, universe has your back. Whatever you believe, it's all there. It's all in abundance. If you give it out, if you are in a state of abundance, in a state of gratitude, everything will work out. But let's let's be real. Let's not be stuck in that asphalt, that dime in that no, asphalt. No, no, can't stay. I have many friends that are stuck. I try not to dwell on. You know, I was just at a, a business event in Florida, and we were talking about, like, the stages of what you're in when you, when you feel stuck. And actually, it's not even about being stuck. It's literally about, like, when you feel stuck, you're legitimately not stuck. It's just going, it's all up here. But you will stay stuck if you get into material things too much. Well, you're going to stay stuck if you're in your head, right? But yes. so just knowing that it's just all in your head a little bit, well, everything's all in your head. Right. This is a reality you're pursuing perceiving right now everything I'm saying you may not even hear what I'm saying because your brain is transforming and, and translating so that it serves you in this moment so you might not even miss. you know Elizabeth Gilbert she was do you know Elizabeth Gilbert? Uh -huh. you really do yes I do she's really from, yeah she was on um, Little House on the Prairie right no oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought that was her name no I don't know but Elizabeth Gilbert wrote uh, eat pray love Oh, could be the same person. I might be wrong. She used to be addicted to Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? Um, I, okay, well, I'm here at Honda. Is this a I, parking spot? No, it's not a parking where is spot. Where's the middle? She just, like, pulled up and was like, uh, this is going to be, this is not a parking spot, y'all. All right, I got to get out. This phone's, a, I'm, I won't be able to concentrate on the day if I don't get this fixed. She's got to get her car fixed. It's because I'm not electronically, what? Inclined? Yeah. In what do you call that? 
Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I'm not an electronic person. Oh, good. We're going to find a real parking spot. <laughs> I was like, she's going to leave me in this car without a real... <laughs> <laughs> Look, customer parking. She's like, not... <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know. I was going to say something about money, though. Okay, say it. Are you giving me some? That's oh, what it is. She's going to give me some money. I'm going to do it on Facebook Live. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I was going to say something about money. Well, go ahead. What I don't is, remember what Oh, it was. this guy's coming. Goodbye. Well, you're in a parking spot. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get it up Oh, that's okay. My question is, are you good with the, like, I can't get my phone connected to this. Either that way. That I'm not. Um, uh oh, they're not going to be able to fix it. One of those two lanes there, and I'll get a salesman to come talk to you. All right. Help you. Yeah, because it worked till Thursday, and I'm not an electronic okay. person. Yeah. yeah, if you the two uh, service reception That'll reception lanes there. They can help uh, me. The door will open up and you can pull right in. All right, uh, get they can do it. It doesn't cost it. Just yeah, they, yeah, okay. yeah. All right, thanks. Did All you right. notice that? I could have stayed where I was. He says, I'm sorry I didn't get to you fast enough. I was in a service lane. <laughs> oh, well, I thought we were in a car wash lane or something. No. Man, I'm really salty. I can't remember what I was going to say about, about it. Oh, Pierre Grimm says guy. Again. All right. I gotta go. Bye. He said he can do it right.